Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next installment of Electric Circuits. Um, welcome. I hope that you've had a good weekend. I think I last spoke to you on Thursday. So I hope you've had a good weekend in between and the first two days of this week so far have gone well. Okay, so let's continue with electric circuits. Um, I was planning to continue with other stuff after electric circuits, but let's see how it goes because I'm actually busy going through exam paper questions with you guys. And it's actually a very important section because what happens is you guys do electric circuits in grade 10. And then usually what happens is your teachers leave grade 10 leave electric circuits or electricity until grade 12 and then it hits the curriculum again in grade 12 and then you're supposed to remember everything you did now in grade 10. So <laughs> it's a bit of a trick situation and the teachers in grade 12 don't really have time to revise it with you. So if you can know it very very well now then you won't have that problem when you get to grade 12 that you won't remember what's going on. Okay so let's carry on shall we? Um, so we were doing multiple choice questions, I mean not multiple choice, we were doing exam paper questions and I want to start with this one here. It says batteries are part and parcel of our personal and professional life. Our cell phones, calculators, watches, car, etc. use batteries, okay? So we're used to batteries being around. Why is my pen not picking up? Just a second, I just need to see where my pen is. Um, it's weird. Okay, so anyway, um, there we go. There it is. Well, it's coming back now. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, so now we found the pen. Okay, so it says we also use many small devices in our everyday life, and each small device needs power. It says define the EMF of a battery. Now, remember, we spoke about the EMF of the battery, and we said the EMF was the maximum voltage or volts that a battery can supply a circuit. And remember we said that it was different from the potential difference that actually happens for the simple reason that there is internal resistance sometimes, okay? So it now it says, consider the circuit below. So here we've got two cells, okay? There's a wire connecting and then it splits and we've got a parallel combination starting over here. It splits up, here's A3, here's A2, goes through, through, through through the two resistors comes together at A1 um, and then comes back through to the switch and back to the battery. Now it says when the switch is closed, ammeter A1 reads 5 amps and ammeter A2 reads 3 amps. Okay. Now it says calculate the effective resistance of the combination of the two resistors. Okay, so remember what did we say? We said that the equation that you need to use for parallel resistors is this. You've got 1 over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And remember I did say that there was a shortcut but that I wasn't very happy with the shortcut. I'll show you the shortcut. Basically you take a common denominator of this. It's R1, R2 and then that becomes R2 plus R1 and that is 1 over RR, okay? But the problem with this is that is fine if you only have two resistors in parallel. If you've got more than two resistors in parallel, or if you've got more resistors that you need to add, then this doesn't work so well. So what I tend to say is rather don't learn that. It's not on your formula sheet, but this year, this equation above, 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus whatever, is definitely on your formula sheet. So we can work with this, and we know that it'll be there, okay? So we're saying 1 over R parallel, in other words, the effective parallel resistance, is equal to 1 over R1, which it can be either of them, so I'm going to say 6, plus 1 over 4, 
Okay, and just to show you how to do this with without using calculator, your common denominator for 6 and 4 is 12. Both 6 and 4 can go into 12. 6 goes into 12 twice. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4 goes into 12 three times. So that's 3. So therefore, we've got 5 over 12 is 1 over R parallel. Therefore, R parallel is 12 divided by 5, which is going to be 2 comma and 2 fifths which is 2 comma 4, okay, ohms, right, okay, you can do this on the calculator, there's nothing wrong with doing the calculator, I'm just showing you how I would do it, right, now it says, what will the reading on a meter 3 be when the switch S is closed, so what they're saying is, when this is closed, yeah, when the switch, when the switch is closed, a meter 1 reads 5 amps, right, a meter 2 reads 3 amps, and they want to know what is a meter 3. And what are they using? They're using the fact that you should know that the current comes along here. La, 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 la. And at this point, it splits. And it splits reverse per rata to the resistance. But that's not important. What's important is that it splits all the current travels through to get to this point. Okay, and at this point, they come back together again. So if I did a random ammeter over here, it would measure 5 amps again. Okay, 5 amps. So if that is 5 amps over here, where am I raising and writing now? If this is 5 amps, and this is 5 amps, and this material is 3 amps, what do we know? We know that this branch is basically going to be the total resistance, I mean total current, minus the 3 amps, which is going to be 2 amps, so therefore it's 2 amps. Nice and easy, hey? Right, now it says, learners are, perf are performing to show that resistors connected in parallel are current divisors, while pretend, okay, performing an experiment, I'm oh, so sorry an experiment okay to show that resistors connected in parallel circuit are current dividers while potential difference remains constant so they set up the circuits below so what they're trying to say is that if you put resistors in series okay i mean in parallel then what's going to happen the current is going to be split so that's what they're really saying okay current dividers the EMF of the cell is 12 volts, okay? Ignore the total internal resistance. Yay, okay. Now, it says name a quantity which is controlled during this experiment. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got the EMF, which is 12. We've got this. We've got resistor 1, which is 4 ohms, resistor 2, which is 4 ohms, and you've got the ammeter and ammeter A1. And they're saying name a quantity that is controlled during this experiment. Okay, so what's important and what you might not realize is that temperature is definitely a con quantity that needs to remain constant because if you increase the temperature, it's going to change the resistance okay um what else could we say we could say we use the same battery um we could say we use the same type of ammeters the same sensitivity things like that okay any of those would be correct now it says calculate the total resistance of the circuit okay so if we go along here la, 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 we get one resistor here which is parallel to this resistor here. So R1 is 4 ohms and R2 is 4 ohms and they want us to find the total resistance in the circuit. Okay, and they've said they can ignore the internal resistance. So therefore we know that 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Therefore 1 over R parallel is equal to 2 over 4 which equals a half. But that is 1 over R parallel. Therefore, the effective resistance, R parallel, is equal to 2. What I'm doing is flipping it. Okay, so now we know the effective resistance, okay, R of the circuit is 2 ohms. Now it says, a meter reading on A3 is 0.5 amps, okay. Determine the reading on A2, and it says determine. What determine means is that it can either be a calculation or it can be an understanding. Okay, in other words, you can decide what the answer is and then explain what it means, how it got there. Okay, so let's do that. So do you agree the current comes along here? La, 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 comes along, splits up, okay? This is 0.5 amps, 
and this is something else that we're supposed to determine. But do you see that the current coming in here is one amp? Okay, at this point it splits. Okay, it splits. And at this point it seems that it is in fact that the resistance of the split is equal to resistance of the split, which means that the current is going to be split equally. So if this is 0.5 amps, this also has to be 0.5 amps. Another way of looking at it is to see, well, this is one amp. Okay, and we know that the resistors are equal in size, therefore these, res these currents have to be the same. So that's 0.5. Or you could say, well, just one minus 0.5 is 0.5. There you go. So what is the reading on A2? It is 0.5 amps. That wasn't so bad. Hey, now it says, if V1 equals 6 volts, let's fill it in. V2 is 4 volts, okay. A1 is 0 0.5 amps, 0 0.5. A2 is 1.5. Oh, that was A3. <sighs> One minute, let me fix that for you. Sorry. A1 is 0 0.5, that makes much sense. Okay, and A2 is 1,5. Okay, it says calculate, reading, calculate the reading on R1, R2, and R3. They want the reading of those. Okay, so one way that we can do this, there are a couple ways we can do it. The one way that we can do it is go, well, we know that the total current that is going through the circuit is 2 amps. How do I get that? Do you agree the current is going to come along here? La, 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 And it splits. It must have split. But this is 0 0.5 and this is 1.5. So what do we do? We know, therefore, that this is 2 amps. The current is 2 amps. So do you agree we can get R3 first? Okay, we can say... V equals IR, but V is what? They tell us it's 4 volts, so it's 4 is equal to the current I, I, which is 2 amps, times by the R, 3. So do you agree that R3 equals 2 ohms, which is divided both sides by 2? Okay, not too bad here. Now we want R1 and R2, and guys, you can do this in any order that you want, as long as you get it right, okay? Um, so we've done R3. Ching. Now it says R1. Okay, how do we get R1? Okay, do you agree that R1 and R2 are R1? Ooh, what happened there? Sorry, we had a little bit of a stutter on our computer. R1 and R2 are parallel. Parallel. Okay, right. Now, what do we know about voltage across parallel resistors? We know that it's the same. Okay, the voltage is the same across parallel resistors. Okay. Um, what else do they want us to work out? A3. Oh, okay. Uh, they want us to work out A3. Okay. Do you agree that A3, I've just already worked it out, is 2 amps? We already know that that is 2 amps. Okay. We've just worked out that R2 is 2 ohms. Okay. We know that this is 2 ohms. Okay. Now think about this. We know that V is equal to IR, right? For the whole circuit, do you agree that we've got V is equal to 6 volts and we've got the chi is 2? two so we have to get r therefore r is going to be three ohms so the total resistance the total resistance of the circuit is three ohms okay this is the total resistance but now we already know that r3 is two ohms okay but r3 equals two ohms Therefore, do you agree that R1 plus R2 have to equal what? They have to equal 3 minus 2, which is 1 ohm. So now we know the resistance is split, and the sum of it is going to be going through here and sum through here, but they add up to 1 ohm. Add up to 1 ohm. Okay. So what else do we know? 
we know that if we put a voltmeter across here, do you agree we'd get the total voltage that goes through this, okay? So if we said the combination of the resistance is one ohm, and the current coming through here is two amps, okay? We're saying V, let's call this V2. V2 is equal to IR, right? With this I is the current across both resistors, both resistors, okay? And R is the total, okay, well, let's call it the effective resistance of R1 and R2. Okay, so therefore we know the total current going through both these is going to be 2 amps. Okay, because this current comes along here, la, 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 and it splits, but it's still 2 amps, and it comes back down here, yeah, da, 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 da. It has split, it come back down, but it's still 2 amps, okay? So that's 2 amps. Now, we want V, so we need to talk about I. Now, I is the sum of the current in both of these, okay? Or we could just work out, no, I'm right. So, we've worked out, sorry, we've worked out I, We've said R is the sum of the total resistance of this, which is said is a 1. And that is V2. So V is equal to 3 volts, okay? So V2 is equal to 3 volts. V2 is 3 volts. V2 is 3 volts. Okay, now what do we need? We need to work out the size of R1 and the size of R2. But we know that this is 3 volts, and we know the current, so then should we can work out R. We know that V is equal to IR, right? We know the voltage across this bit here is three volts. We know the current in, for example, this first one here, the current is 0 0.5. And the total resistance, the total resistance of the whole circuit of this bit is going to be one ohm. Okay, but we don't know what that is. So that's three, I mean R, okay? We know what the three is. We know the 0 0.5 and we want the R1. We're just trying to find R1. Therefore, R1 is going to be 3 divided by 0 0.5, which is 1,5 ohms. So this dude here is 1,5 ohms. Similarly, similarly, we can do exactly the same thing here. We could say, well, we know that the total voltage going through this bit is 3 volts. We don't know, we do know the current that's going through this is 1.5 and we want the reading on the resistor, R, question mark, okay? So do you read that R is going to be 3 divided by 1.5, which is 30, 30 ohms. So therefore we've got that that is 30 ohms. Okay. So now we've worked out R1, R2, and A3, and we're done. How cool is that? Okay, so please don't be shy to do these in any order that you want. It's not a big deal. Okay, right. So what I want to do now is I want to give you just two minutes to read this for yourself. Just two minutes to read it for yourself. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do it together. Two minutes, starting now. It's now 3.18 and 3.20. I'm checking. Go. Okay, grade 10, how far are you? Okay, I cheated, it wasn't quite two minutes. Okay, 
but um, I hate the idea of dead air. So let's see how we did. It says, I hope you've at least got as far as reading the circuit. Okay, it says in the circuit diagram below, you've got three identical bulbs, three identical. So you've got M, N, and P, and they're identical. The ammeter has got negligible resistance. So the diagram to answer the questions that follow. Assume that both switches are closed. So we need to assume that both switches are closed. Choose the answers from the options in brackets. Connecting more bulbs in parallel causes the resistance to the circuit to increase, decrease, or remain the same. Well, the more bulbs we have in parallel, remember we spoke about this, the more bulbs we have in parallel, the more pathways you have for the electricity, or remember we use the analogy of traffic, to travel. So the more pathways, the less or the smaller the resistance. So it says here, connecting more bulbs in parallel cause the resistance of circuits to decrease, decrease. The potential difference across the battery to does what? Okay, the potential difference. Okay, now we're assuming, okay, that is the voltage that is actually supplied to the circuit. And if, if your resistance has gone down, what happens to potential difference? It's going to increase, it's going to increase. Okay, now it says the following question to refer to the circuit above. Calculate. They want the effective resistance of the circuit. Okay, so do you agree we've got this? This is six ohms. Now, this is important because if you hadn't read this bit, you would not know that there's three identical bulbs. And then you would get this problem wrong. Okay, I know that most of you probably have gone back and read and read and read until you've gone, how am I supposed to work this out and then go and read it and find the information. But do you agree that that's kind of a stressful situation and also it wastes time. So we know that they're identical. So that means that that's six ohms and that is six ohms. Okay, now it says they want to find the effective resistance of the circuit. So the way we do this is we first work out the parallel and then we work out the straight, I mean the, the series, and then we just add them. Okay, so let's do the parallel. Do you agree that one over R parallel is gonna be one over six plus one over six? Why? Because they're all the same, they're identical, and we got told that this is six ohms. Okay, so the common denominator is six, and that goes two over six, which is one third, and that's one over R parallel. Therefore, R parallel is three ohms, three ohms. Okay, now, that's not finished because that is just the resistance of the parallel part of the circuit. Now we need to add the six ohms that are left over. So six ohms is gonna be added to the three, so the R total or effective, of the circuit, assuming there's no internal resistance, is six plus three, which is nine ohms. Okay, there we go. Now it says, what is the reading on the ammeter? Okay, so now it didn't mention any type of internal resistance. So we're going to happily ignore it, okay? So now it says, what is the reading on the ammeter? And what equation are we using? Do you agree we're using Volt's law where V is equal to IR? Okay, let me just write that down. Whoopsie. Oh, sorry. Oh dear, it's one of those days. Hang on, I'm gonna go back. Um, pen, I'm looking for the pen. There we go. We know that V is equal to IR, right? We want the reading on the ammeter. We've got the V, it's 12. We've got the total resistance. It is going to be nine plus, sorry, three plus, it's nine ohms. We've got the total resistance. Can we find the current? We've got the current, we've got the current. We worked it out, didn't we? Oh, I just deleted it. I know we're working out the reading on the ammeter. Sorry, man. I'm getting so confused today. We're working out the reading on the ammeter. That's what we're doing. So then do you agree that we can get I? So we can say V is equal to IR. V is your 12 volts, right? It's equal to 
the I, which is what we're trying to find out, and the total resistance which they gave us, which we worked out to be 9 ohms, 9 ohms. So 12 divided by 9 is I effective, okay? Well, the actual ammeter reading that we want, okay? So 12 divided by 9 is going to be 1 and 3 ninths, or a third is the reading on the ammeter, which is I. Okay, so therefore this is one and a third, one and a half, just no, it's one and a third. The effective resistance of the circuit, that would be your, we've done that already, I'm just writing it over here, nine ohms. Okay, now it says, and I just want to erase some stuff, that's why I'm rewriting it. The charge that passes through point P in two minutes. The charge that passes through point P in two minutes. So we need a formula that relates energy, I mean charge and time. Charge and time. Charge and time. Okay. So what you guys need to do is find your physical sciences textbook if you haven't already got it out and find the equation that you think is going to relate the charge with the time. Okay, the charge with the time. And they're talking about through P, so they're talking about the main chain. Okay, so do you agree that if we're talking about the charge, then we need to use Q is equal to IT. That is the formula that we're using. And we've got the current going through that point P. It's the same as the current going through A, which is 6. Am I right? No, sorry, 1 and a third. You're so confused. 1 and a third. So I is 1 and a third. 1 and a third. Times by the time. And notice that this is in minutes. So what do you have to do? You need to convert it to seconds. So it's 2 times 60. And then we need our calculator. So that's one and a third, which do you agree is four over three times by 120 and definitely a calculator. So let's get out our calculator. So we're going to go four over three. Oh, let's switch it on. Four divided by three equals. And then we're going to multiply it by 120. 120. Delete 120. And it equals. Hmm. Multiplied by 4, divide by 3. This calculator is driving me insane today. Let's try again. We're going to have 120 multiplied by 4, divide by 3, equals 160. So that is equal to 160 coulombs. 160 coulombs. Um... Okay, so there we go. It's 160 coulombs. Now, please note that you had to change the time to seconds. If you leave it a minute, you're going to get it wrong. Then it asks you for the potential difference across each of the bulbs. Okay, the potential difference across each of the bulbs. Okay, do you agree that the total potential difference that we've got is 12 volts? Potential, total potential for the whole circuit is 12 volts. So if we work out the potential for one of them, Let's do this one, for example. Then we can just subtract to get that one. Okay, so let's do that. So we know that the current coming through here is 4 over 3 amps, right? We know that that is a 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so do you agree that we can work out the volts? We can say V is equal to IR. The current is 4 over 3. The resistance is 6. So that cancels with that and you have to 2 and that's 8 volts. Okay, so this bit here, P, has got 8 volts going through it. 8 volts, it's huge. Okay, out of the 12. Which means how many volts are of each of these? Do you agree that they're going to have the same number of volts because the current is going to split up and some of it's going to go yeah and some of it's going to go yeah and then they join up together again and they move on. So the potential difference is split. Is split. So then what do we know? We know that if this is 12 and that's, I mean, if this is 12 and that's 8, then what left over is 4. So voltmeter here would be going to be 4 volts. 
And similarly, a voltmeter here is going to give me 4 volts. Okay, not too bad, hey. Sure, another question. Okay, so again, I'm going to give you just a minute to read this for yourself, maybe write some notes, and then we will continue. Just a minute. Right, so how far are you? I really hope that you solved this question by reading the information right at the top. It says, consider the following circuit. When the switch is closed, the voltmeter V1 reads 4 volts. Voltmeter 2 reads 1.6 volts and voltmeter 4 reads 1 volt. So they've told you what's happening, okay? They've told you the voltmeter readings, but that's when the switch is closed, okay? It says, find the effective resistance of combination of the three resistors. Okay, well, this is actually really easy because what do we know about these three resistors? Do you agree these three resistors are in series? So what do we know about series resistors? They add one after the other. So we got R total is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus da 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 da. Okay, equals R1 is 5 plus 7 plus 8, which is just going to be what? 7 and 8 is 15 plus 5 is 20 ohms. So there you go. What is the effective resistance to 20 ohms? Now it says find the voltmeter reading on V3 when the switch is closed. Okay, so they haven't mentioned internal resistance at all, so we don't have to worry about it. So what do we know? We know that the total 4 volts has to equal the sum of these volts, okay? So what are we saying? We're saying V1 is equal to V4 plus V2 plus V3. So therefore we've got 4 volts is equal to V4, I mean, what did I do? V1. That is 4. We've got V2, which is 1.6, plus V3, which we're trying to work out, plus V4, which is 1. So we've got 4 volts is equal to 2.6 plus V3. So therefore, V3 is going to be 4 minus 2 comma 6. So 4 minus 2 is 2, add 1 is 1.4. 1.4 volts. This switch here is 1 comma 4 volts, 1.4 volts. Okay, so now we know that. Now it says, if the current passing through the 8 ohm resistor is 0.2 amps, what will be the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor? And the correct answer is that it will be the same. It will again be 0.2 amps. 0.2 amps. The longer, I mean, remember that the current is the same in a series circuit, the same. So the current going through here is 0.2 amps, what will be the current going through here? Also 0.2 amps. Then it says the charge of 48 coulombs charge flows through the circuit in two minutes. Calculate the current flowing. Okay, so we know that Q is equal to IT. If you guys struggle to remember this, is on your formula sheet, but another way that I remember it is quit. Q is equal to IT. Okay, so they tell us the charge of 48 coulombs, a charge of 48 coulombs, passes through the circuit, and that's I. Okay, calculate the current flowing I in two minutes. So what is it? It's two times 60. So therefore I is going to be 48 over two times 60. So therefore I is equal to 48 over 120. And now we need our calculator. Um, there it is. So we go 48 divided by 120 equals, and that is 0 0.4 amps. So that's interesting here. Okay? So what do we know? We know that resistors in series are potential dividers, but the current remains the same. 
Okay, now let's look at this multiple choice. And the reason I included this is because there's so many questions of multiple choice on this section. And it's a really good way to test if you know your work. So let's think about this and says, consider a circuit where two resistors are connected in parallel. So you've got two resistors are connected in parallel. If a third resistor is not added in parallel with the original two, state what would happen to the voltage reading across each resistor and the current reading through each resistor. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that initially we had a circuit where we had a resistor A and we had a resistor B. Okay, that was originally. Now they've got that, but now they've split it up and this is resistor A, this is resistor B, but now we have A, third resistor C. Okay, and they're saying, what is happening to the current and the voltage? Okay. It says state what would happen to the voltage reading on each resistor and the current reading through each resistor. Okay. So let's think about this. Do you agree that what we know that V is equal to IR? Okay, V is equal to IR overall. Um, now we're assuming there's no internal resistance, okay? So do you agree that if the, if the voltage stays the same, the voltage that the battery can supply the circuit stays the same, and the resistance goes down, what is going to happen to the current? It has to go up. Okay, so therefore increase, and that's it, okay? I mean, sorry, the current has got to go up. Hang on. I'm talking about the current across the current just across the cells, I mean the resistors. And it makes sense. If you think about it this way, if you, and I've explained this to you already, if you're in single lane traffic or in double lane traffic and suddenly they broaden it out to five lanes of traffic, what happens? You end up going faster. Why? Because there's less resistance. And the more resistors they have in parallel, the less the resistance. So what's going to happen to the current? It is going to increase and therefore the voltage will remain the same. There you go. Why will the voltage remain the same? Well, if you think about it again, if we've got a little voltmeter across here, V, and we've got another voltmeter across here, we're going to call this V1. Okay, the resistor R stays the same, right? But we know that V is equal to IR. So if I now has increased and the resistance has stayed the same, what's going to happen to the voltage? The voltage is going to increase and the same for there as well. So the voltage has to stay the same if the resistance decreases, which is exactly what happened. As the current increased, the resistance decreased and vice versa, and therefore the voltage remains the same. Right, last question for the day. Last question, okay, and then on Tuesday, Thursday, I'm going to start with transverse waves. So it says for the circuit below, calculate, and you've got what do you have? This is interesting. We've got three volt meters, each reading six volts. Okay, we've got a five ohm resistor, three ohm resistor with voltmeter process and an ammeter across the whole circuit. Okay, now it says calculate the total resistance. Okay, well the total resistance is pretty easy because what do they have? There are just two resistors that are in series, right? So do you agree that's just eight ohms? That's ridiculously easy. Now they want to know the ammeter reading. Now here's where it's tricky because we want to use V is equal to IR, right? And we have the eight ohms. Okay, we've got the eight ohms. But now we have a voltage, but we're not sure what the volts are because it's in parallel. And here's the rule. If you've got volts, if you've got batteries in series, if your batteries or cells are in series, then we add the volts. We add the volts because that's what they do. They make a, a more powerful battery, okay? It's a bigger volts, okay, on the battery. Whereas if the cells are connected in parallel with each other, and that's about it, they can't be connected anywhere else, then the volts stay the same the volts stay the same, stay the same, the same. Okay, but what happens, what happens is it lasts 
longer. So yeah, what is happening is that the volts are each six volts, okay? So originally they were six volts, and now because we add them in parallel, they're still six volts. So volts are six volts, okay? So therefore we can say that I equals six over eight, or I is equal to three over four, which equals 25. No, it's just the current, what they want the current, which is, sorry, naught comma, Seven five apps. There you go. Not comma seven five. Apps. Okay, so therefore we got the current, which is not point seven five. Okay, the voltmeter reading. The voltmeter reading is just across the three ohm resistor. So we know that V is equal to I R. The current there is not point seven five because it's a series circuit. So that is not comma seven five times by the resistor of three so what do we get well let's get out our calculators and we go 0 0.75 multiplied by what was it by three i think let me just move this 0 0.75 times by three equals 2.25 so the voltmeter reading is going to be 2,25 volts, V equals R. Okay, now it says, that's 2.25, 2,25. Now it says the quantity of charge that passes through the 5 ohm resistor in 5 minutes. So we've got Q is equal to IT, right? That is our formula, Q is equal to IT. The current through here, we worked out it was 0 0.75, 0 0.75. The time is in five minutes five minutes so it's going to be five times 60 to get to seconds okay and again we now need our calculator and this is the last question we're going to do today grade 10 so let's go through it whoopsie i didn't mean to do that so it's going to be 0 0.75 grade 11 0 0.5 times by uh, 5 times 60, close bracket, equals 225, 225 coulombs. There you go. Okay, I hope you've had a good grade 10. So I hope you've had a good lesson and that you now understand this. And um, yeah, we will carry on with waves and transverse waves and pulses on our lesson on Thursday. Have a great day.